Hey there everyone, welcome along to my channel. I'm Jenny Kirk and today what I want to talk about is what's the difference? Old versus new Hornby Terriers. <laughs> So you can see out here there's an assortment of uh, different terriers. We've also got one of the Hornby H classes in the South Eastern and Chatham Railway livery. And the reason for this will very quickly become clear. One of the big differences for me between the old and the new Hornby SECR livery terriers, you can see there is the shade of green used. Now, the reason the H class is there in the background is just to show you that the new Hornby terrier seen there in the middle is the right shade and the old one it's, it's almost a London and South Western Railway pea green and you can see the wheels look at a slightly odd shade there now the reason for the wheels is because the uh, the actual innards of the wheels are molded in a colored plastic rather than being painted so it's just a choice of plastic there that's uh, gone into that but really the, the paint finish on the old uh, terrier here in this livery it looked odd when it arrived to me uh, at the time I had the uh, Backman C class to compare it to and it just didn't quite look right now the new Hornby terrier if I move this out of the way that is the right livery and you can see there as well the wheels are properly finished we've got a much more slender spoke arrangement and they are the right colours so the colour finish is definitely something that is much improved on the new Hornby Terrier versus the old one. Now these two at the background here, this isn't necessarily quite so clear cut. Both of these are old Hornby Terriers, but you can see there they're supposed to be the same livery, but they're not. And this one here, Whitechapel, is a lighter colour than Wadden there at the back. Now it's probably about... 15 years separate these two in terms of being brought to the market and it's clear that towards the end of the run of the old Hornby Terrier some of the colours started to look a little bit more faded on application so really we can't hold that against the older model in terms of um, you know finesse of detail because it's the same model underneath there on both of those. The actual history of the old model was such that uh, it was originally introduced to the market by Daypole in, I believe, the early 1990s. And uh, the moulds were then sold to Hornby and it became a mainstay of the Hornby release schedule. It's a pretty good model for its day and I've always said that these terriers have a charm all to themselves. But Hornby retooled in the last uh, year or so a completely new terrier and this isn't just a warmed over model this is from the ground up retooled from scratch so I'm going to bring back in the old Hornby Terrier and these are exactly the same livery so what you're looking at here is a direct side-by-side -side comparison now ignore that sort of pea coloured green um, we'll not so much forgive that but overlook that and we can see instantly that uh, some of the fittings there on the dome between the two are much much finer as you would expect on the newer model so you see there on the dome very very fine separately applied detailing and on the old model a quite chunky plastic molds now they were pretty good for their day but um, there's probably nearly 30 years separating these two models in terms of when they're actually tooled up and brought to the market. We can also see there we've got some uh, uh, plugs there on the top of the firebox area which are not replicated on the old model. You can see the whistle there again it's quite a chunky mold those handrails too very chunky and uh, some of the what I believe I don't know whether that's a representation of the condensing apparatus but certainly with the older Hornby model, it was one size fitted all. But the new one, 
We've got much, much finer handrails. We've also got uh, some rivet detail there coming through, which seems to be lacking in the older model. And uh, we've got a much finer whistle there, and you can see the pipework going into the front face of the cab. It's so much finer. And let's have a look at the uh, windows on the front of the cab. You can see there, they almost look like separately applied. You could imagine that those are the real deal. If we go across to the older Hornby model, they're much more basic. There's none of that rivet detail appearing there at all. And you can see with this sort of rather cruel side-by-side -side comparison, the front face of that cab is so much better. Other areas to uh, look into, well, the lining there, we've got... Um, pretty fine lining there over all of the different bits and pieces the sole bar is all lined out we've got lining on the wheels and if we go across to the older Hornby model that lining is a lot more simplistic we don't have any lining on what I believe is the Westinghouse air uh, pump for the air brakes um, nothing at all that's a very basic um, plastic mold you can even see the molding seam down the middle there We've got no lining to speak of really on the wheels other than it appears to be a red band around the circumference. But you can see that that plastic looks almost waxy. There's no paint finish on there whatsoever. So going back to the Hornby model, the Westinghouse air pump is actually, it, it's finished in multiple colours. There's no parting line on the mould and that is so much better. And the lining as well, we've got it everywhere that it needs to be, and it is so much finer. Now, let's have a look at other areas. There's quite a cruel comparison there. The height of the buffers, the old Hornby Terrier, well, the buffers themselves are much coarser. That's actually one separate plastic moulding there, and you can see the parting line. And on the new one, they actually look like they're part of the sole bar rather than a glued on extra. But the height, the height is remarkably different there. And uh, again, same for the front. It looks like a separate moulding. It is a separate moulding. But that height is very peculiar. Now I'm going to take the new Hornby Terrier and I am going to place it for a like for like comparison to the H class. And uh, you can see there the buffers are the right height. So that is a major issue with the old Hornby Terrier that has been fixed. The buffers are at the correct height. That is actually quite important because the old Terrier did always look a little bit peculiar to me. Um, you know, the, those buffers were just such the wrong height. If we go for a top-down look, we can also see, um, well, actually, no, the, the, the buffers are spaced correctly but um, certainly the new terrier is a lot finer and if we look at this uh, top-down look across the new terrier there's so much more detail going on there we go to the old terrier most of that detail just isn't there it just looks clunkier um, much less finesse to speak of the bunker um, the coal in there does not look like coal to me. Um, I don't know, it just it just looks toy-like on the back there. When you look at a like-for-like -like comparison, the new one, I get that coal load is pretty high, but everything looks more prototypical. And uh, generally, so let's have a look. Uh, the vacuum hoses, you can see there, the old one, very, very chunky. New one much much finer if we look now at this angle we can see inside the cab we can see all of those back head fittings uh, we've got uh, an awful lot of separately decorated bits and pieces in there we've got the interior of the cab nicely finished in the proper colors we've got the representation of the wooden cab floor it's all in there and there's some pretty fine stuff going on if we go to the old hornby terrier well, it's all black in there, and uh, it's actually very difficult. I'm going to try and angle that towards the light. There's not really much at all going on in there. It's very, very basic. The black paint does kind of hide some of that, but when you compare it to the new Hornby Terrier, 
There is so much detail and it's really brought out by the correct finishing of the interior of the cabs. And this is something that we've seen in a, a lot, if not all, new models. And it really does, in my opinion, add so much to the model. One of that major area in terms of uh, the new versus old is the motor and drivetrain. Now, the new Terrier is completely DCC ready. Indeed, you can buy it DCC fitted from Hornby if you so choose. It takes one of their six pin decoders. And what I actually found is it's very easy to get inside this locomotive and DCC chip it. Um, it uh, really just took a matter of minutes for me to do that and it worked flawlessly. The pickups from the wheels and the smoothness that it runs is actually very, very good. Even though it's a short wheelbase locomotive, I've had no issues with this over point work. The old Hornby Terrier did work pretty well for me on DC, um, but it was nowhere near as reliable as the new one. In terms of DCC fitting this, it's a pretty tight fit inside that body shell and you would certainly need to make a few uh, major compromises, in my opinion, to be able to find space for that decoder. And uh, it does occasionally lose uh, power over insulfrog frog points. So it is something that a stay alive capacitor would be very necessary. And I'm not really convinced that there is space in there for that. So in terms of the DCC ability, the new model wins hands down. If we pan back, the old Terrier it is chunkier, but it did capture the look of the Terrier, and in its day was a great model. But the new one is just so much closer to the proper model. And I believe as well, Hornby have tooled for some of the variations on these. So we don't get this one size fits all anymore. We've got a much, much closer to prototype locomotive. It also comes fitted as standard with the slimline tension lock couplings in NEM pockets, which does mean that you can change those couplings to anything you want. The old Hornby Terrier had the larger goalpost tension locks, which, whilst it is possible to um, trim down and fit uh, an aftermarket slimline tension lock coupling to these, it is much harder. There is no NEM pocket. The couplings were the right height, so that's pretty good. It was something that Hornby always did seem to get right. It was a good model in its day. And, well, this model, it just knocks it out of the park for me. Um, it is one of those things that certainly when a new model of an old favourite comes along, quite a lot of people are like, well, there's not really anything wrong with my old model. I'm happy to keep hold of these. But having the opportunity to put these side by side I have to say that the old models, they're going to get retired. Certainly this one is now in line to be retired now that I have got the exact same identity in a quality high specification model. But the older ones still, they were firm favourites in their day, especially that Wadden. But I'm looking forward to being able to get hold of uh, the new spec Terrier in these liveries. And I really won't be looking back. Uh, these will live on, hopefully they'll pass to Hornby's railroad range and will provide an opportunity for the younger generation to get what was actually a really good locomotive into their collection at a really good price. So hopefully uh, Hornby will take heed of that and will make sure that these do live on in their uh, railroad range. Now I hope this comparison has been very informative to you. Don't forget, if you're looking to get hold of your own version of these Terriers, we've got links down below to help you with that. And I do hope that this video has been informative to you. It's been great to have your company. Don't forget to like this video and share it too. That's really important to get the word out there of some of the stuff that we're doing on this channel. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. And I look forward to seeing you back here again. But until then, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take really good care of yourself and... Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Thank you.
Today's video has been brought to you by my books Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House Books 1, Books 2 and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.